And basically, we just start throwing ideas into the, into the kitty. Uh, several ideas were left over from the tour that we had just finished because we were out for so long and we were playing every day at sound checks and you know, all these great things just happen on, on the spot. Well, we have our sound man recording out front and we, we stockpile the tapes. We go through and we say, oh, there's a great bit. And then we kind of you know, dust the cobwebs off of it and, and actually, the, the guitar riff for Don't Tread On Me was a sound check jam from like months before. And we, we kind of said, you know, what was that one thing? And Ted went into it and it was like, oh yeah. And then, you know, just bang, 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 bang. It just falls right into place. It's really easy to over rehearse something. And if you, if you work on a song, you know, over and over and over for hours, you know, the week before you go into the studio, it's going gonna, it's gonna to almost become sterile. And it's not going to have that, you know, that that feeling like anything can happen, that, that, that living on the edge. And that's really where, where you get that spark of the music. Um, there are times when I'll, I'll kind of work on some drum fills, but I, I never get too carried away with it because those spontaneous moments really are the things that, that you want to try and capture. Uh, for Don't Tread, I remember several instances while we were in the studio and we're working on a song and I'm halfway through it and all of a sudden you know the next change comes up and I'll think to myself oh man what what am I gonna do here and I just kind of did something and you know just kind of like whoa and then when you go in and listen to it it's like oh that was cool and then those those things become the favorite things on the record you know because you know because they just happened and they had that that magic I've played drums for 22 years and I've only played double bass drums for the last three. Even though the drummers that I listen to, uh, Terry Bozio and Neil Peart being double bass drummers, influenced me greatly, what I was doing was taking their double bass drum patterns and learning how to imply them with a single bass drum. What it did is it, it made my right foot get a lot stronger because I had to learn how to do you know, da 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 bop with one foot. Um, and there's things that you can't do with one foot that you can do with two foot. And there they are, right there. Da 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 da. Um, so in those instances, I would use my right hand on the floor tom. You know, if I'd want to go digga 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 digga, I'd do it between the kick drum and the floor tom. Well, when Damn Yankee started rehearsing, uh, one day, just for the hell of it, can you say hell on this video? Okay, uh, I brought in a double bass drum pedal, um, and Ted started playing the pile driver riff in its initial stage, and it seemed obvious to go duga 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 duga, and that was all I can do, and I could only do it for about 15 seconds, and then I was like, oh, oh, my leg, ah, ah, but they loved it. They were like, oh yeah, that's it. We've got to have that, and I thought, oh great, that was stupid. Now I have to learn how to play double bass. So what I did. This is a true story. I'm telling you here first. When we recorded the basic track for Pile Driver, I basically played it with one kick drum. When we did the basic track, I played it kind of like a fast polka beat, like this. Okay? Played it all the way through until we had the, the, basic, the basic track. Um, once we got that, Immediately, I overdubbed the second bass drum. Using the right kick drum again, what I did was put on the headphones, listen back to the track, and whenever that part of the song would come up, I would play backbeats on the kick drum, like this. If this is, this is the beat, 
one, two, three, four. I'd go like this. That's how I did pile driver. Basically what I did, uh, which I think isn't uncommon to, to work on double bass drum, is I just put on the headphones with a click and I just started real slow and worked my way into it and just built up the muscle memory and the, and the, the muscle control. And uh, there, were, there were a few nights on the road when that song was like, whoa, anything goes. Uh, you know, there'd be times when I'd be playing it sloppy and I'd turn around at my drum tech, Feedback is his nickname, and he would just be going, ah! <laughs> and I'd be like. <laughs> you know, everyone's got their process. Everyone has their way that they record. Some producers like to assemble tracks. You know, they like to have you play the song 10 times, and then they use the first verse from take three, and, and the, the first B verse from take six. And it's not to say that that's right or wrong, but I haven't had that kind of experience, so it seems very foreign to me. You know, uh, there's something about playing a song all the way through and having that be the performance that goes on record because it's, it, it should be one complete thought. You know, the start and the finish, uh, you know, really, if, if, if that middle is pulled away, you know, you're, you're, I, I really think the momentum of the song is going to get killed. Um, and, and I know that you know, that, that you could turn on the radio right now and hear something that was pieced together and, and maybe not be able to tell the difference, but, you know, coming from the drummer's viewpoint, uh, I really prefer just to sit down, play, and have that be what goes on record. When we come off of the road, the first thing I do is put the drumsticks down and walk away from it. When I start rehearsing on my own at that point, I don't go back to playing Damn Yankees music. When we go back to working on the Damn Yankees material, I will have expanded my library of drumming knowledge. And all those new things, even if they didn't apply before, they can apply now because I, I've learned how to you know, uh, take out selectively the, the, new st the new things that I've been working on and apply them to the Damn Yankees material. Because there are so many different styles that we cover, um, it, it really gives me an opportunity to stay creative all the time. Uh, you know, we'll do something from the power rock ballad to the slamming double bass uh, type song, and it's great because it just it keeps your creativity flowing because you never really get too settled into one specific style. It's really good for I would suggest highly being the drummer in Damn Yankees.